Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm looking at a Mercedes E-Class here. It's a Euro 6, so it's the newer 2.0 diesel engine, I believe. So, just taking the engine cover off there. This is the engine that we're looking at. So, it's one of these newer type ones, sort of similar to the Audis. That you've got the EGR cooler system on it. Alright, so I've got my diagnostic machine here already ready. And you can see we have an engine management light on there. Okay, we're just going to connect back into the vehicle here. Wait for that to load up. It'll take a little bit of time there. Okay, we're loaded in. We have a couple of codes here. We've got some other radar codes, pressure monitoring system codes here, but we're not interested in that. We're looking at the ECM. And we have two codes there for the DPF. Let's go in and get them to load up properly. Uh, come on. Mercedes is just a slow diagnostic system for any uh, for any scan tool. This is a little bit quicker than others, but it seems to be taking its time a little bit on this one. Okay, we're in. We'll press read the code. Oh, we've got to wait again. Okay, here we are. Um, P3005C6. Subcontent of the particle filter is not okay. The value has maximum load was exceeded. And another one, subcontent of the particle filter is not okay. Basically the same code apart from a 5 or a 6. So, no clear reason why there. Uh, let's go back, read the data stream, actual values at idle, engine running. So, you can see there the coolant temperature is up around 88 degrees, so pretty sure that's going to reach 90 degrees. So I know that's not an issue. Uh, there we go. Press continue. Boost pressure sensor. Let's give that a rev. Exhaust pressure sensor, yep, we're getting a reading from all of these. Okay, let's go back out of that one. Uh, exhaust system, values of the DPF, yes. Okay, we've got 91 degrees for the coolant, that's okay. Total number of regenerations, 209. Fill level of the DPF is 160%. DPF at idle 20, 20 millibars. Let's accelerate it up just over 3000 RPM. It's a little bit sensitive. Let me just try and get that sort of steady. It's really hard to get these cars, these modern cars, they just want to run away on you. So, around about 120, it's not, not massively blocked. Um, but it's obviously enough to cause an issue, so... Can't see any reason why the DPF was blocked. Let's go to here, history of regenerations. Okay. What just happened? Oh, we need to switch the engine off. Okay, let's do that off ignition on yes okay we're in we have last time it done a regeneration 220 kilometers ago 
duration of the particle filter regeneration was 7 minutes. Reason why cause of termination. Sorry, move the camera over a little bit. So the cause of the termination of the last DPF regen was that the vehicle was idling for too long at one point. Now, this is a taxi, so that is very believable. Now, if we come down to the next one, reason why it failed the regen is the ignition was switched off, and again, it was idling for too long. Uh, we have another one down here. Diesel temperature of the DPF was too high. Um, hmm. And then we've got another strange one I've seen, which was, again, temperature too high and the atmospheric pressure too low. I've not really seen that before. Um, but why the DPF could be getting too high, temperature too high? Possibly because it's trying to, trying to clean the DPF and it's not being able to do it, or hmm, maybe an ash buildup. Let's go back from here. Do we press continue, we're back to get out of here. Okay, so we're back here at the live data of the DPF itself. So what we want to do is get that back to 0% and get that 20 HPA down under 10, but as close to zero as possible. Um, and then we'll uh, go from there, I think. There was a couple of, of instances that said that the atmospheric pressure was too low. Um, I'm really not sure why that would be unless the atmospheric temperature, atmospheric pressure sensor is faulty. Um, and then there was the, the one saying that the DPF got a little bit too hot. Um, we're going to clean the DPF out and see how it goes on this one. I'm uh, possibly going to recommend a replacement atmospheric pressure sensor I've not really seen that before to be honest but we're gonna clean it out and then we'll go from there so just behind a little metal cover here we have the DPF pressure sensor I'm just gonna leave the engine running because I want to stick a manometer on it so it looks like somebody's already left this loose we didn't need to put a spanner on that we'll open that off Pull that to the side a little bit there. Might need my two hands for that. So now I'm just using my little pry tool here to push the hoses off of the DPF hose uh, sensor. Just like that. So with a manometer connected to the DPF there we can see that that reads almost exactly what the live data is reading around 20 millibars. And then if we connect it to the hose that goes after the DPF we have 2 millibars. So a lot of people ask that question, how do I know what pipe to put it in? Again there, I've said it on some of my other videos, but I'll say it again. You find the holes with the highest pressure with a manometer, and that's the one that you're going to be putting your fluid in through. So that's that hole right there. Okay, back in the van. I have here Launch UK DPF Cleaner. Uh, that's available at launchtech.co.uk website. We have the launch DPF gun here that goes onto the compressor and I've got a half a bottle of this fluid which I'm going to pour in here. I've got maybe a little bit more than half here. Just going to get that poured in there. And now we're going to top that up with uh, just plain water. So that's it, we just use a little drum of water there. We've got that full. Okay, now I've got the DPF gun connected to the hose. That hose is connected to the DPF gun. The gun is connected to the compressor. Now we're gonna put the engine running on this. It's a Euro 6 engine with an EGR cooler. Um, and of course, some of the fluids can get sucked back through the, the intake. So I'm just gonna do this while it's running. I don't wanna overload the DPF and then have some of it sucked through when I start up. So I'm gonna do this while the engine's running. I'm gonna spray some of the fluid through. Now the EGR cooler shouldn't open up until you rev the vehicle up. I'm 
just going to hold this until all of the fluid is gone. Okay, so all of the fluid is gone. It's been idling for a minute or so. We'll remove that. We'll get a little bit of fluid come back out of the tube there. We'll just wait a minute until that dries off and then we can connect back up the pressure sensor back to it. Okay, back in the vehicle, holding her up around just over 3000 RPM. See where we can get this differential pressure to be. Sorry, it moved again. Maybe we've got it back where it needs to be there. Sorry, it's very sensitive. Okay, we've got it. So this would normally sit, I'd say roughly around 40 to 50 millibars around, around the revs there, around these revs. Okay, so that's sort of leveled out there. We'll let it idle down. We have six HPA now. Okay, we can see there that the um, now the pressure has come down. The fill level of the DPF it doesn't need. We don't need to reset that by the looks of it because it's it is coming down manually on our cylinder. But we'll make sure that comes down as close to zero as possible. Okay, I'm going to come back out of the data stream. Special functions. Teach in process. Teach in components. We're going to do... Let's have a look what we have here. No, nothing that we're looking for there. Reset learned values, let's have a look in there. Yep, we're gonna do the drift compensation. Even though we haven't replaced these, I do like to reset these on a Mercedes, so it resets the pressure sensor, the airflow meter, on all of that. Engine is at standstill, yep. Press that. Wait for it to load there. Okay, so that's been reset successfully. So we'll skip to the next page. So now it's doing a control unit reset. And that's all done. We'll reset the contamination of the air, air filter as well. That's okay. Yes. Continue. Now that's done, we'll go to the exhaust system, particle filter. So, trying to tell the vehicle it's had a new DPF, 
Uh, I don't know if I'm missing something here, but it says if you press continue, it aborts the teaching process, but I can't see any other option to continue from here. But it's not needed anyway. The percentage of the DPF is coming down on its own. So I think we'll just continue to let it do that. Uh, we'll go back into the values of the DPF. Uh, we need to start the car up. Let's just see where we're at now anyway. We did hold some more revs on it there for a while. Uh, 68%. Cooling temperature 88 degrees. Looking at this data here, I'm sure it didn't say anything like that at the start of the video. 6,600 kilometers since the last regeneration. Um, not sure if something's changed there or what. So basically I wanted to reset the DPF so I can reset this counter. Um, just in case the car does come back to me I can see how many regenerations it's tried to do since that. Uh, we're now sitting at sort of 5-6 millibars on idle there. Uh, we'll go back. I'm not sure if we have to delete any fault codes or if they've already been done. Yep, they've been cleared. Um, so it should be pretty much it. Uh, it looks like this car has just been used as a as a taxi. It's got these taxi symbols up there, and according to the live data, it was, it's been idling too long. So I don't think there is an issue. Um, the one things we're to worry about was the the temperature sensor on the DPF and the atmospheric pressure. So whether or not those are given a true reading or not, so possibly might need looking at those two sensors in the future if the issue comes back but uh, other than that I'm going to try and tell him to use the vehicle a little bit longer on longer journeys if he can do that ok now we've got all of these codes here for all sorts of different systems so we're just going to clear all of that So that's it, we'll be all finished on that and I'll see you in the next video.